Hey guys, welcome to Differentiation Week 6 Review. We're going to be doing a, one question on kinematics and then a couple of questions on rates of change. So, as usual, these are the three questions we're going to be looking at today. So what I would recommend you guys to do is pause at this point and um, work out these three questions. Um, and then we can go through we can go through the answer after that. Okay, so let's go through question one first. So question one, uh, you've got an object that's moving in a straight line, uh, velocity is given, and you're trying to figure out what the um, at what time the acceleration is equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna differentiate velocity. So we've got velocity equals 2t divided by 36 plus t squared. Uh, I'm going to use um, quotient rule in this case. So where f is equal to 2t, which means f dash equals to 2, and g equals 36 plus t squared, and in this case, g dash equals 2t. So the velocity function, when you differentiate it, you're going to get acceleration. So we can write acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So the differentiation of that, I'm using a quotient rule. So f dash is equal to 2 multiplied by g, which happens to be 36 plus t squared minus f, which is 2t, multiplied by g dash, which happens to be also 2t. And the whole thing is divided by g squared, which is 36 plus t squared. Okay, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the numerator. When I simplify the numerator, I'm going to get 72 plus 2t squared minus 4t squared. I just realized I forgot a squared here for g squared. And the whole thing divided by 36 plus t squared to the power of 2. Now, we're trying to figure out at times when acceleration is equal to zero. So I can basically write zero equals 72 minus 2t squared. I've simplified that numerator, folks. And the denominator is 36 plus t squared over 2. So what we can do is um, at this point, we know that the numerator has to equal zero which means we're going to get 72 minus 2t squared equals 0. Rearranging it, 2t squared equals 72. t squared equals 72 divided by 2. t squared equals 36. And t equals 2 plus or minus 6 seconds. Cool. Um, so obviously, in this case, we know the object is moving in a straight line. So we don't really know much about its previous journey. So uh, when I look at their answer schedule, they were saying that you can accept t equals to six as well. That's just one of the answer. Then I look at the question here, um, especially here when it says find the times. Bit tricky, but um, I, you know, just to be safe, so I'll put t equals plus or minus six seconds. Cool, let's go to the next question, folks. All right, guys. So for this question, you've got a container that's winched up vertically from point from a point P. So basically, there's the container, the blue box, and it's being pulled up at 1.5 meters per second. So that's our first clue. So we can see that H is actually changing with respect to time. So we're going to write dH dt equals 1.5 meters per second. Now, the question that they're asking is. Uh, obviously it's being observed from point Q with an angle theta uh, which is 20 meters away from point P uh, so they are they're asking at what rate is the angle of elevation increasing when the object is 20 meters above point P so when the object is 20 meters above P they're asking what is the rate of change of the angle so now if you guys have been following my um, kind of way of doing rate of change you know that the first thing is um, you will be given a rate, which in this case is dhdt, and then you'll be asked for a question. So the question in this case is what is d theta dt? So 
you kind of have to come up with an equ another rate and you can work backwards as how to get that rate. I'll show you guys how to do this. So we know this is what we are looking for. Um, we have been given dh dt. All right. Obviously, we got to multiply by another rate to get d theta dt. So the way I do it is I put this as d theta. Oh, sorry, d theta. So sorry, I would put that as d theta divided by um, well, what is theta changing with respect to h? So I need an equation. I need an equation, something to do with theta and h. All right, and I can do that because I know that h, h can be written like this. I mean, for example, I've got theta here. h it will become the opposite. 20 will become adjacent. So I can write this as tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And this can be written as tan theta equals h over 20 which means I can actually say h is equal to tan theta multiplied by 20. So from here, what I could do is I could actually work out dh d theta. Because when I differentiate this, I get dh d theta. And 20 tan theta, when you differentiate it, you're going to get 20 sex squared theta. Okay, so what I've got here right now is I've got, I've basically got dh d theta d theta. It's just a matter of substituting everything now. So d theta dt equals dh over dt, which is 1.5, multiplied by dh d theta, which is 20 sec squared theta. Now, problem is we don't actually have theta. All we have is we have actually got it when h is 20 meters above the point. So if you think about it, so we've actually got to figure out what that angle is first. So we know that PQ is here, which is already 20 meters, right? We know that it's the container is 20 meters above, hoisted above, which means we can use um, tan, tan of theta to actually work out what this angle is. But really, if you look at it, if they're 20 and 20, you're dealing with an isosceles triangle, which means theta is equal to 45 degrees. So that's what we're looking at. Now, if theta is 45 degrees. Um, obviously, we've got sec squared theta. So we know that uh, sec theta equals 1 over cos theta, which means sec squared theta is going to be 1 over cos theta squared. Now, cos of 45 degrees, you know, you guys can do this in the calculator, but I know that it's going to be 1 over root 2, uh, which means for 6 squared theta, I have 1 over 1 divided by 1 over root 2 squared. And if I do that, I actually end up with 2. So going back to my equation, I would get 1.5 multiplied by 20. Mm, actually, I've just realized I made a really big mistake here, guys. Um, dh d theta is 26 squared theta. All right, and I'm supposed to have d theta dh, which means the equation I've actually written it incorrectly. So the equation should have been d theta dt equals 15 multiplied by 1 over 20 sec squared theta. So which means I'm going to get d theta dt equals 15 over 20 times 2. Sorry, not 15, 1.5. Ooh, it's one of those days, guys. I'm sorry about so many mistakes here. So, and when I simplify this, I will end up with 0 0.0375 radians per second. There we go. Um, sorry about the long amount of working there, guys, and a lot of messing around with this. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, if you have any questions on this, just pop in the comments and I will answer it. But apart from that, I'm going to go to question three now. Hopefully that one comes a lot better than this. All right, so with question three, um, you've got a spherical balloon that's um, increasing its volume at 300 centimeter cube per second. Now they're saying the material of the balloon is you know, limited strength, so it's going to burst when the surface area reaches 7,500. So we're trying to figure out the rate at which the surface area of the balloon is increasing when it reaches bursting point. Okay. Now, I know you might not have been familiarized with this, guys, but with rates of change, um, you can actually compare three different rates to get one of them. And I like to call these triple threat, the triple threat uh, rate of change questions. But um, you know, I'll show you guys how it actually works. So if you look at what, what are all the information we have, the first information we have is we have uh, DVDT. Okay, so we have DVDT, which is 300. Now, we know surface area for a sphere is 4 pi r squared, which means if I differentiate um, surface area with respect to dr, I'm going to get 8 pi r. I also know volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, which means the rate of change at which the volume changes with respect to dr, so dv dr, is going to be 4 pi r squared. So I'm just differentiating the v, guys. Now, what was I looking for? I was looking for, the question actually asks you, what is da dt? We're up to that so far. The other thing also is we're asked to find the surface area when the balloon actually bursts. Now, we know the balloon bursts when the surface area reaches 7,500. So using this, and the surface area equation, we can actually work out what the radius is when the balloon's going to burst. So we're going to get r squared equals 7,500 divided by 4 pi. So r will end up being square root of 7,500 over 4 pi, which means r is equal to 24.43 centimeters. Okay, so Notice what I meant by triple threat. Triple threat is because this is what I'm looking for. There's one, there's two, there's three. I got to put those three things together as one long equation. So if you look at it, I'm going to have dA dt equals dV multiplied by dt. Now, obviously, I do not want to see dV. So I'm going to take this equation and put it in here. But I'm going to flip it upside down as dr dv, okay, which means the two dvs are going to disappear. But now I've got a dr in the numerator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation, put it here, and I'm going to have it as dA over dr. And what you should see is the equations on the right-hand side is going to equal dA dt. So substituting everything, dv dt is uh, 300 dr dv is 1 over 4 pi r squared. da dr is 8 pi r. And so from here, I can start cancelling things out. So obviously, pi and pi disappears. 4 and 8 goes to 2. r once. And what I'm left over with is 600 divided by r as the equation for da dt. Now, remember how we worked out r right here on the right-hand side? That's the r we're going to use. So this could be written as dA dt equals 600 divided by 24.43, and that is equal to 24.56 centimeter squared per second. And that is what that is the rate at which the surface area is increasing when it actually reaches its bursting point. All right, guys, that was actually a lot easier than I thought, but be aware of these triple threat um, rate of change questions because they do come in the exams um, as excellence questions. But, you know, if you do get it, it's, it's not too bad after you do a, a few practice on the, one of these questions. All right, guys, that's basically it for this session. Uh, as usual, if there's any questions, 
pop it in the comments below and thank you for watching.